What's up everyone, Takedown here, welcome back to another video. Something that you guys might not know about me is that I'm a huge fan of the Fast and the Furious franchise. So today I decided to rank every movie in the Fast and the Furious series. Let's get right into this. Okay, so before we get into this video, I just want to mention that I'm only going to be ranking from the first movie up until the 8th. I'm not going to be ranking Hobbs and Shaw because technically it is a spin-off series and also because I have yet to watch that movie. So for this video, I'm only going to be ranking the first eight movies in the Fast and the Furious franchise. Up first is the Fast and the Furious. This for me is the most iconic one and the most memorable one because it was all about street racing, which is what got me into the series to begin with. In this one here, we have Dom, who is a highly popular street racer. But on the side, he does a lot of criminal activity, which is hijacking transports and other crimes like that. And we also have Brian, who is an undercover cop, trying to help take down Dom. In this movie, Dom basically brings in Brian to his crew, because Brian is a newcomer to street racing, and he tries to help him out there. And it's not revealed until the end of the movie that Brian is a cop. So Dom this whole time did not know that Brian was a cop until the end of the movie. There's a lot of street racing in this movie, which I'm a huge fan of. And again, that's what this series is all about whenever it started. So I honestly loved this movie. My favorite scene in this movie is at the end, whenever Brian and Dom do the quarter of a mile race. And it results in Dom getting hit by the train. This movie has a lot going for it. It's a great story. It has a lot of street racing, a lot of cool cars in it. It has Dom and Brian, which I love them together. They're great in the movies. So for this movie here, I'm going to have to rate it a 9 out of 10 because it is my favorite movie in the whole franchise. The next movie is Too Fast, Too Furious, which again is a great movie, but it only focuses on Brian. It has nothing to do with Dom. In this movie, it mainly shows that Brian basically leaves his life as a cop behind in LA to go to Miami, Florida to get into street racing there in a new city, which he does, and he does great with it until the feds catch up with them and he has to work out a deal with the FBI to help take down a very dangerous drug dealer. With the help of an old friend, Roman, which is played by Tyrese Gibson, they eventually are able to take down this drug dealer. But in this movie, there again is a lot of street racing scenes, which is what got me into this series to begin with. But also, Tyrese Gibson is hilarious, so there's a lot of funny moments in this movie. This movie here, because of how special it is, it focuses on Brian. It doesn't have Dom in it, unfortunately. But it shows what Brian did after the events of the first movie. It has Tyrese Gibson in it, a lot of street racing, and it is a pretty funny movie and a great movie, great story. Everything about it is awesome. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10 because this is also a great movie. The next movie is The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. This one here is a whole change up to the whole series because it does not have Brian nor Dom in this movie. Dom does make a cameo at the end of the movie, but this whole movie is not focused on anybody from the whole Fast and the Furious franchise. In fact, for this movie to make sense more, you should be watching it as about the fifth, maybe even the sixth movie in the franchise. If you're going to watch from the first up to the eighth, it makes more sense to watch it as the fifth movie instead of the third movie, just for the story to make more sense. But with that given, it is mainly focusing on Sean, which is a new character in the series, but he's only shown in this movie. He's never shown again in any of the other movies for the Fast and the Furious. So for me, that is very disappointing. I thought he was great in this movie here, but he's never again seen in the Fast and the Furious series. In this one, it mainly focuses on Sean, who is in street racing, but he's in street racing in North America. He has a Chevelle. And he does good there, but he gets caught by the police and he has to basically go to Japan where his father is to basically learn discipline. But while in Japan, he learns about street racing. He learns more about drifting, which he didn't know anything about before. And that's what he basically has to get taught is drifting, which as you guys might know, I'm a huge fan of drifting. I think it's very cool. I love doing it in video games. So the fact that this is not only on street racing, it is on drifting. That's why I'm going to have to rate it 7 out of 10. The story is very cool, but it actually has, to me, nothing to do with the rest of the Fast and the Furious. Other than the fact that Han, who is the guy at the end of Tokyo Drift who gets killed, 
he makes a return in the fourth or fifth Fast and the Furious movie. The fourth movie in the franchise is Fast and the Furious. In this movie, Dom is forced to come out of hiding whenever Letty gets killed. And he basically wants to find the culprit and find why she got murdered and who murdered her. And he also finally crosses paths with Brian, which they put their differences aside to basically investigate who killed her. In this movie, there is very little street racing. There is a few street racing scenes, but there's very little street racing. And it also crosses into Mexico when it shows the tunnels getting into Mexico, which I thought was pretty cool. So for this one here, the story is very unique, but it's not based on a lot of street racing. It's based on who killed Letty, which is great for story purposes. But the fact that she got killed off in this movie is very odd and I believe the reason she wasn't in this movie she actually got killed off in the franchise is mainly because I think at this time she had other movie roles that she was committed to and she couldn't give those up to come and be in the Fast and Furious franchise so in story they had to kill her off so for this one here because the story is on point and it brought back Dom and Brian I'm gonna have to give it a 7.5 out of 10. The next movie in the franchise is Fast Five. This is where it starts to go downhill and instead of doing a lot of street racing, it was more focused on action and a lot of cool cars and also focused on Dom and Brian and the rest of the crew. So it was mainly focused on story, which is still great. I just wish they had the street racing effects like they did for the first few movies. And that's what for me it was all about. In this movie, ever since Brian and Mia broke Dom out of custody, they have basically traveled border to border evading the authorities, which is really cool. But now there is a corrupt businessman which is trying to get them killed. So they basically have to stop and confront him before the federal agent, which is played by The Rock, gets to them first. So this is a lot of action in this movie. The Rock is in this movie. It's very cool, but because there is not much street racing in this movie, just a lot of cool cars, I'm going to have to rate it a 7 out of 10. The next movie is Fast and the Furious 6, which in this one here, ever since Dom, Brian, and the rest of the crew did that big heist in Rio, they became very rich and basically had to scatter the globe because they were not able to return home to their families. In this one here, Agent Hobbs, which is played by The Rock, has been tracking a bunch of mercenary drivers who is somebody that Dom knows very well. It is Letty, who was killed in the fourth movie. That's why in this one, Having her get killed off and then return in the sixth movie, for me, did not make a whole lot of sense for story purposes. And it was very choppy, very iffy. The story didn't make complete sense. Basically what happened is after the accident in the fourth movie, she did not get killed. She actually lost her memory. And the guy that actually hit her is the one that took her in and brought her into their team, which is the mercenary drivers. So in this one, Dom and the group basically have to try to not only take down these mercenaries, but also to try to get Letty back to try to help her remember that she was part of their family and she's not a bad guy, she's part of the good guys team. So this movie here is very odd, very iffy for the story. For this movie, I'm going to have to rank it a 6.5 out of 10. The next movie is Furious 7, which is a great movie, but it's also very emotional because partway through shooting this movie, Paul Walker, who played Brian, actually died in a car crash, and his brothers had to step in, and they had to do, I think it's CGI, to make it look like it's Paul Walker, but in fact, it is his brothers that are stepping in on the role. So it's very emotional there. In this one here, there's basically the older brother to the bad guy that died in the sixth movie, who's back for revenge. Basically, he's the one that killed Han, and that's why at the end of the movie for Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, that movie should be watched as the fifth or sixth movie just for story purposes because Han died at the end of that movie and then came back for the fourth and fifth movie. Odd for the story, but that's why Tokyo Drift should be watched as the fifth or sixth movie in the series. But basically that guy is back for revenge, so the government agent is offering help for Dom and says he will take care of Sean and he will kill Sean or do whatever he needs to with Sean, which is the one that is trying to get Dom and his group basically killed. He's back for revenge on them. If Dom and his crew 
can help rescue a kidnapped computer hacker. But again, it is very emotional because Paul Walker died partway through filming this movie. So there's a lot of emotional factors for this movie. But for this one here, because of everything that's going for it, it is a great story. The fact that they're tying in Tokyo Drift, which in my opinion had nothing to do with the rest of the series. It was very odd why they did Tokyo Drift other than the street racing uh, blow up in Japan, which made sense at the time. The story, honestly, it should get a 7.5 out of 10, and that's what I'm going to be ranking this movie. The next movie is Fate of the Furious, which is a very choppy movie because Dom is portrayed to be a bad guy in this movie, where in fact he's blackmailed to keep his loved ones alive. So it's very odd there. Some bad guys from previous movies actually returned. Some of that I thought was dead returned to help take down at the end of the movie. There's a lot of very odd scenes, a lot of very good scenes, but... Very choppy, very odd, and it's very chaotic to see what in fact is going to happen. But at the end of the movie, Dom actually gets his loved one back. The former lover of his actually got killed, but he got his son back, which he had with his former lover, back whenever Letty was portrayed to be dead, and then she returned to the series. So for story purposes, it's very odd, so I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 just because the story, it eventually made sense, but going through the movie, it didn't make a lot of sense. It was very odd and very confusing. So this was me ranking every movie in the Fast and the Furious franchise. What would you rank all of the movies? Would you rank some higher or would you rank some lower? Let me know down in the comments below, but I am going to leave this video here. hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.